Trolls is in theaters now, but ever since early trailers, we've had a bunch of requests asking for that new laser eye effect. And since we're starved for your approval, that's what we're going to do. In each of the shots from the Eternals, the laser effect looks slightly different. In this one, it has less uniform, bobbly, distorted look to the beam, and the effect around the eyes looks like glowing veins. The beam also has spark looking lines in both of these shots, so we're gonna do a mix of all three to get this. So let's dive right in by dropping our footage into a new comp in After Effects. Then we're gonna right click and create a null layer, renaming that layer to left eye. We're gonna duplicate and rename for the right eye. With the footage layer selected, we're gonna be using Mocha Pro. You could use the free Mocha AE version, but it doesn't include their mesh warp tracker, which we're going to be using for the skin. Open Mocha and use the X-Spline tool to draw an area for the skin around the left eye. Because of the camera angle, we won't be needing anything around the right eye. We've shown in a few episodes now how to use the mesh tracker, which you can check out in the notes below. So we're not going to be going into full details in this tutorial. Next, we're going to draw a new shape for each eye and rename each spline to match. Track forward and toward the end when Josh closes his eye, we get this message. So from this point, we're going to disable the eye layer and continue tracking for the mesh. Then go back to the start point, re-enable and track backwards and do the same thing when the eyes shut. With the mesh layer selected, stabilize it on the frame we started at. Again, this is covered in more detail in the other episodes that we link to below. Close and save Mocha, and now in the tracking data, we can select one of the eye tracks, change the export to transform, and select the corresponding null layer to apply to it. Then do the same for the other eye and null layer. To make the bright eye effect, we're going to be creating a new solid layer and roto it to Josh's iris on one of the eyes, then draw a second mask for the full eye. Setting this one to intersect, which means it'll only show the selection of the first mask within the second mask. Feather both slightly, then link it to the track for the eye and enable motion blur. Use a fractal noise effect to add some random variation. Changing the blending mode from normal to none will get rid of this outline. Increase the brightness and contrast, then alt click the evolution stopwatch and type in the time expression. And we're gonna be using time asterisk 200 for it to slowly animate throughout the shot. And to get more detail, you can decrease the scale. Now we're gonna add a glow effect set to screen and boost the radius. To make it warmer, we're gonna be using Video Copilot's color vibrance set to orange, increasing the gamma and checking fill MTBG. Set the layer to screen, then duplicate the glow, this time moving it after the color and changing some of the settings. Duplicate again, changing the settings to add a softer final glow. And you can still use the fractal brightness to control how white hot you want the eyes to look. Keyframe the mask for when he opens and closes his eyes and trim the layer to start and end at these points too. Duplicate this layer and move over to the other eye, swapping to the other track null too, and changing any mask keyframes to fit the shape of this eye. Changing the evolution random seed will change the pattern from matching the first eye, giving us this. And I know After Effects can be a bit daunting when you're first starting out, so I'm gonna pause here and talk a little bit about Creative Live, who is today's sponsor. We've talked a lot on the show about how you can find so much education online, and that has sort of made film school mostly a thing of the past, and Creative Live is one of the contributors to that. You can find all kinds of classes for creatives, including a class that I did with them, which you can get at creativelive.com forward slash filmwrite, and you can use the code filmwrite10 at checkout to save $10 off of a Creative Live subscription. Plus, you can watch several of my lessons for free. And there are several solid courses for After Effects, including After Effects for Beginners. With our show, our tutorials assume you have a base knowledge of the software, so if you find yourself a bit confused, this is a great resource resource for that. But they also have a ton of other classes on all kinds of topics. There's over 700 instructors, 2,000 classes, and over 60,000 different lessons. 60,000. And these classes are taught by incredibly talented people that are inside the industry doing it right now. So it's not that whole, if you can't do, you teach. These are people who do, who are also now teaching, like Will and Brooke Blair teaching film composing. And they have composed for features like Green Room and Hold the Dark, or Jim Denault teaching cinematography. These are 
other people that are doing major shows and films right now. And again, you're getting a great variety like editing, film producing, directing actors, crowdfunding your film, how to distribute your film. And again, I have that class on there as well. And of course, those After Effects classes. And I know we all like freebies. So right now you can watch a few of my lessons out of my 15 hour course for free for the next seven days. So again, jump over to creativelive.com forward slash film riot. Use the code film riot 10 at checkout and save $10 off of a creative live subscription and watch those classes of mine for free again, only for the next seven days. So jump over to that now. Getting right back in for the skin vein pattern, we're gonna be using this free water caustic texture from unsplash.com. Place it over the eye area and set it to screen to help us see where it lies. Add a tint to make it black and white, then it curves to add brightness and contrast. And to add more detail, we can copy and paste the fractal noise from one of the eye layers and change to multiply. Alter the scale, brightness, and contrast settings to your liking and duplicate. Changing again just to add some general variations and patterns across the texture. Create a new solid for a mat and change the texture track mat to alpha. Then draw a shape on the solid layer for which selection of the texture you want to keep visible and boost the feathering. Because we're using this as a mat, it means we can easily reposition the texture to find a pattern that we like. And if we move the anchor point to the middle, then we can also rotate and scale around the eye. For further detail, duplicate both of these layers together and scale down. For more of that swirl pattern look, we can add a shape layer and draw a few curves. Up here, you can choose stroke color and width for the lines. Change the blending mode to overlay, then copy and paste one of the fractal noise effects again and add a subtle blur effect. Select all of those layers and pre-compose for the skin texture. Set to screen again and copy paste the mocha effect from our footage layer. Under module renders, change to stabilize warp and quality to high. Now our texture warps with the face. Copy and paste the color and glow effect from the eye, altering the settings to work with the texture. There's no specific settings, we just change the values until we were happy. Add a fast blur effect and keyframe the blur amount as well as layer opacity for it to blur and fade at the start and the end of the effect. And then you should end up with something like this. For the beam, we're gonna create a new solid this time and make it a bit bigger than our comp. The reason for this is so that when we link it to our track, it will be big enough to always remain fully in frame. And for this, we'll be using the free Sabre plugin from Video Copilot. So set that layer to screen, link it to the left eye track, and position the core start and end points to line up with the footage. To get a similar distorted look to the Eternals beam, we'll change the preset to fire, change the color to more of a yellow tone, and then we got close to replicating the look by changing the glow intensity, core start and end sizes, glow distortion amount and noise scale, core distortion amount and noise scale, then increasing the wind speed and noise speed to be more frantic. Lower the motion blur to see more of the distorted details, keyframe the end offset at the beginning to show the laser beam extending, and at the end, keyframe the start offset and start size to have it finish and trim the layer to end at this point. To get these spark type lines, we will duplicate the beam layer and change the preset to tractor beam. Once again, changing the color, glow settings, and distortion settings to speed them up, as well as unchecking blend on top and squeezing the vertical scale of the solid to keep it closer to the main beam. We can use a bit of a directional blur to smoothen out the lines and then a vector blur to make them a bit thinner. Then use an exposure effect to boost visibility. And finally, we have this. You can also use an adjustment layer linked to the track and roto some simple feathering masks on the face to add Add some light reaction with a curves effect, keyframing the opacity at the start and the end. We also used Video Copilot's heat distortion effect below the beam to add some displacement as well. And finally, some overall glow, lens stock, camera shake, and a grade to complete the look, giving us this. But that's it for today. If you're in the mood for some more Eternals content, check out our sister show, Variant. They've been putting out a lot of content around it, including a history of Icarus. So link for that in the notes below. And as always, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do that and hit the bell button so you're always notified when we put out new content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.